Now it's time for Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf, the number one relationship advice radio show in the U.S. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ask Dr. Love. I'm so happy to be with you again this week. I have a question for you. Do you think it's possible you might be attached to an en energy vampire? Whether you're a sensitive soul, an empath, or simply just a good person, you may have an energy vampire in your life. And what is an energy vampire? It's a narcissist, someone capable of completely draining you and making you feel it's all your fault. A narcissist can make you feel miserable, doubt yourself, and tell you how horrible you are while stealing your life blood. But there is an answer and a way to stay safe. And in this interview with Dr. Christiane Northrup, she's going to show you how to spot an energy vampire, know when they're controlling you, and set yourself free. So it's really wonderful to have Dr. Northrup with us on the show. She's a visionary pioneer in women's health, a board-certified OBGYN, New York Times bestselling author of Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom, The Wisdom of Menopause, and Goddesses Never Age, as well as uh, the host of eight highly successful public television specials. Her work has been featured on The Oprah Winfrey Show, The Today Show, NBC Nightly News, The View, Rachel Ray, Good Morning America, 2020, and The Dr. Oz Show, among many others. Dr. Northrup was named one of the 100 most trusted people in America by by Reader's Digest and one of Oprah Winfrey's Super, Super Soul 100, a group of leaders who are using their voices and talent to awaken humanity. Dr. Northrop has also been named one of the Watkins Spiritual 100. That's a list of living people that make a unique and spiritual contribution on a global scale. And in December 2022, Dr. Northrup was one of six women to receive the Zelenko Foundation Rosa Parks Award and honored for standing for truth God and light against all odds, smears, obstacles, and censorship. She continues to inspire and awaken humanity through live events, her website, drnorthrop.com, social media presence, Facebook forward slash meta, Twitter, Telegram, her podcast, True North on Substack, and through her line of health and personal care, Amada Life. I'm wondering what this sound is. What is this? What, what is this music? Do, do we know where this is coming from? <laughs> because it's very strange. It's not from your end, right, Dr. Northrup? I can't, I can't even imagine how it would be, but... You know, uh... I, I hate to tell you, my husband in spirit plays incredible games. He messes, <laughs> he messes with me constantly. I, you know, you and I both um, are Hay House authors, right? We had our Hay House shows side by side. He messes with me, he turns music on, machines on and off, lights on. So I guess he wanted to say hello to you. And I, I'm sorry that he was- I, No, I love it. I actually, I love it. I love oh, it. You're, you're, if he was going to do it with anyone, it's with you. I mean, I have a video of him and me uh, where I say to him, okay, turn the lights on and off. And he does. And I say, turn them on. Off. It, it, it's just, so it's, it's a wild ride when you're with me. Anyway, I'm glad to meet you because you and I have been like spiritual ships passing in the night. Your show was always behind mine or ahead of mine on Hay House Radio. So I want to welcome you. <laughs> To ask Dr. Thank you. Mom. Thank you. <laughs> and the wild ride. <laughs> so, That's right. That sounds great. <laughs> you know, I want to jump into your letter, dodging your uh, your book, dodging energy vampires, because I I loved it. I really loved it. And you know, the reason I said letter is because your introduction read to me like a love letter, and it mm. felt I felt you speaking from the heart and giving your reader your heart and the feeling I'm watching over you. I'm talking, talking with you personally. I'm devoted to guiding you to safety and freedom from these emotional vampires. And it's so well written too. So I, I just wanted to thank you for this book because thank so, you. so many you empaths know. are just, oh, oh my goodness. Yes. So, and you know, I was going to ask you to begin because the other thing I love is your vulnerability. You talk about your own experiences with 
energy vampires. And usually we write our books based on the stuff we're grappling with, right? I mean, where else are you going to get the, the idea? So did you want to speak about that for a moment? Yeah, I um, did not know the term narcissist. I didn't know what it was uh, until I went through a divorce in 1999, which was uh, the, the end of the 24-year 20, marriage happened the day after I was on Oprah Winfrey for the very first time with Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom. And as I was watching the Oprah show with my wife, okay, so at, in the day, being on Oprah was a big, huge deal. If you were an author or whatever, it was just a big, big deal. And so I had my very first show with her. And so usually you, you would show and a week later they would have the show on and it was about my practice and my approach to women's health and so on so i'm sitting in my living room and we're watching the oprah show my uh my family at the time was not very supportive except for my oldest daughter um one was you know why do we have to watch this show with mom i want to play with my friends uh you know, my then husband wanted me to look at some lesion on his ear, some he's taking phone calls throughout the whole show. Then back into my home office, and I'm getting calls from my editor at Random House, um, the publicist at Random House, my PBS producer, they're all telling me how great the show is. And what I had created in my own life, so let me take 100% responsibility for this, was an inner circle family where I was always trying to, um, in a way, make up for the fact that I was redoing women's health, but I still wanted to be the perfect wife, the perfect mother, the, all of it. And I'd literally created a thing where the my outer world appearance was very, very supportive. And my inner world, my home and family were really not safe for who I really was at all. And, and that's because I married certain aspects of my mother. And this is, we all need to understand this. We all marry our mothers. <laughs> yes, and what we're trying to do, some people marry their fathers, but what you, we're trying it, to it's do- It's usually the parent you had the most trouble with, you know? Yeah, always, because what we're trying to do, everybody, so let me be clear, you, on a soul journey, you're trying to bring love into an area where it wasn't so it's not we we repeat the pattern over and over so you know once it's if it's uh if you find it in your mate then you get rid of your mate and then you find it in your boss and then you find it in your best friend and it's a it's something that you repeat over and over and as doris e cohen says in her book repetition also hay house book uh she said this is not neurosis this is literally repetition to bring uh, understanding and love to an area that it, there you didn't have it. And, uh, but you, so once you recognize the pattern, um, empaths are born with a negative ego. We keep, we keep our ego alive by looking for things to improve about ourselves. And the narcissist is born with a superior ego. They think that nothing that they do is wrong. So it is a marriage made in heaven or hell depending hell. on how you look at it and they become the narcissist is our biggest teacher ultimately our biggest teacher because when you get to the point where you can see them coming before you get involved then you've really made some soul progress so and so what i would like people to do as they're listening to us uh, jamie is what are the names going through your head? Because yeah. one in five people is uh, has a personality disorder. Um, narcissists, men as narcissists, we think of women as lines. Believe me, it's equal between the genders. It does not matter. And the borderline women are the ones that you can't please no matter how hard you try. So the good men choose those women across the room and they see the woman who isn't smiling think oh i can make her happy 
And so they chose a, they choose a woman you cannot make happy. You cannot. And so those are the women who are generally better looking than all of us. And they seem mysterious and interesting and, you know, we'll be married for and the men they've been with are, um, you know, just a husk by the side of the road. They, they suck the life out of the good men. Uh, with women, what you find is that the woman, oftentimes the guy seems larger than life. He's handsome. He's all of that. And those of us with the negative ego, ego think, oh, oh, he chose me. He chose me. Instead of putting a high price on your own head, that you, what you do is you fall in love. Now, this is the key here, everybody. You fall in love, not with who's there. You fall in love with who you see could be there if you fluff them up enough. So let me give you an example in my own marriage. So we're in medical school. I meet my husband and he's, and I'm reading a book about angels. And he says, I cannot believe a woman of your intelligence would read crap like that. Okay, yeah. what do I do? Now what I, I walk away. At the time, it was like, oh no, I will teach him the wonders of the spiritual world. And this poor person does not have a faith that I have, but I will introduce him to that world and he will be happier. And so- right. Right. Okay, so it, it and so right. when I, and, you know, I'm thinking that you know you talk a lot about the the wounds that we suffer in childhood. This goes beyond you know the past lives and the epigenetic element, but just the fact that most empaths have not had the ideal childhood experience. So it's very common for us to choose someone who reminds us of the parent who abused us, neglected us, abandoned us, because there's that fantasy, if I can fix this partner, I will feel like I'm getting the emotional goodies I lacked in childhood. I mean, it's a real compulsion, the repetition compulsion. I write right. about that in my first Hay House book. So it's it's not a neurosis, it's really a quest for healing, you know? I want to, I want, and if I can save and fix this defective parent and then later down the line defective partner, I'm going to finally have somebody who's healthy enough to love me back, you know? There it is. There it is. <laughs> yes. And so uh, the way to measure your progress is how long it takes you to see it in a person. But there are certain subcategory of empath that's really important. I learned from Sandra Brown, who wrote Women Who Love Psychopaths, a title that at first you go, ah, but except that it's true. Uh, yeah. And, and that is, um, these are people who have super traits, super traits of uh, loyalty, uh, ability to work hard, the, the kind of women who are CEOs of major corporations, lawyers, doctors, they're not the women you think of um, from the other side of the tracks who are beaten, this kind of thing, the battered woman. No, no, these are people who are kind of uh, captains of the of the world. And what we do, we're so capable that we really think we can save them. No one else could, but we can. So our skills that we would use in medicine or writing a book or running a company, we think we can apply those to a narcissistic individual. And the, and the deal is this, we can't, but I wanna tell you a couple things that, that happen and you literally have congenital blindness to this kind of character. You just can't see it. So you've got to have, ask yourself, do your girlfriends like this guy? Okay. If they don't, chances are very, and then you're always making excuses for them. Uh, or, you know, you can't take them anywhere because you have to constantly be buffing them up. And, uh, you know, you don't want to have a partner where you've always got to be taking care of them at any social situation. Right, or be a partner person. or a project. That, that's it, a part, right. that's very good, a project. And uh, so once you see that, you, you might have to, you've got to have people who can see it before you do. And then you have to get to the point, and this often will take a while, you have to get to the point where 
you're trusting your friends that they're telling you the truth because you've learned your lesson. And um, there's a book called In Sheep's Clothing by George Simon, Dr. George Simon. And he and he was uh, he came on the course that I did on dodging energy vampires, and he used to teach therapists about these personality types. It's one in five people. And he uh, and at the beginning, so this is like 25 years ago, half the therapists would leave the room because the therapists went into becoming therapists to heal themselves and heal their own world. And so here's someone telling you there's a group of people that you can't help. Yeah. And they refuse to believe it because here is the lie that he told me. And the lie is this, only hurt people hurt people. Only people who've been hurt in childhood hurt other people. But and have you noticed that the empaths, that the empaths are also often hurt, but they choose to go into helping others and trying to heal others. Whereas the narcissists and the psychopaths, they're hurt too, but they inflict harm. So it can go two ways. That, 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 yeah, it can go two ways. Healing only happens from the inside. And right. what narcissists live on is what, what is called narcissistic supply. This is a very important term. And it is your attention, your money, your sexuality, your fame, whatever it is, they live on that. And here's the deal. They have malignant intuition. The minute you start to wake up, the minute you start to withdraw that narcissistic supply, they with uncanny detail, exactly what you need to hear to stay. Yeah. And so they will just give you a crumb and then you'll say, oh, he really gets it. He really does understand me. And Absolutely. then you'll stay. And the other thing is this, we have so much uh, faith and so much energy that we can live on the potential, what Ann Wilson called the process of the promise. Oh, wow. He will get better in time. Oh, he's made strides when, you know, I remember listening to a sports guy say, potential means he ain't done shit yet. <laughs> ain't that the truth, right? Right. That right. Is the truth. So here's, here's what we have to do. And we're going to think that it, we're being a hard ass. We're going to think that it's hard hearted to finally just Say what they do. They're very good at crocodile tears. They cry at movies. You think that they're much more sensitive than they are. They're not sensitive. What they're doing is they know what it takes to keep you on the hook. They know exactly. And here's what's so painful for so many people. And that is this. And I, I have a good friend who went through this very handsome guy that she was married to. And she thought at the beginning, because he ran a family business. And so she, and he had all kinds of time to spend with, and it was, uh, you know, she was so excited, all of that. The minute they got married, um, he got one illness after the other to keep her on the hook. Um, she would, she was the sole provider of the family, um, all the rest of it. And finally, 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 when she was completely exhausted, um, she was ready to finally divorce him. She, he didn't want her to announce the divorce to their son. So she had to wait and wait. I said, why aren't you just telling, oh no, it will ruin his life. And finally she does it. And I said to her, okay, are you willing to watch this guy remarry in 15 minutes? Are you willing to go through that? Because that is what's going to happen. And by God, he married a Texas oil heiress, and now he's, you know, he's uh, skiing at all the resorts. Uh, he went from being, um, I mean, they can really do pathetic well to get your attention. I mean, he uh, he gained weight, he looked terrible, but then you know, get another source of narcissistic supply. He works out, he diets, he looked like a million bucks, and of course snags another woman who's paying for everything. Now, 
she has healed at this point and you know and me like i have and it it doesn't matter but you have to understand there were people had read george simon's book or mine who said they'd been married to a narcissist for 30 years and no therapy here's the, one of the problems the therapists Amy. don't tell them the, the, the therapist what they'll do particularly a couple's therapist oh it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman the therapist will do whatever you need to hear to stay in the relationship yeah Very and that's the therapist Right, well, because now you're just like helping somebody destroy somebody else. Let's take a break. We'll be back in a moment. Are you a business looking to expand across the USA? Ask Dr. Love reaches millions of radio listeners, offering you a unique opportunity to reach out to almost every adult listening group as everyone is concerned about their relationships. There is no other relationship advice show broadcast anywhere else in the USA. By advertising on Ask Dr. Love, your company can reach an audience that no other show touches. Visit AskDrLove.com and fill out the contact form to get in on this tremendous opportunity. Fill out the contact form at AskDrLove.com right now and get all the details. Will it be your company that gets to take advantage and grow your business? Want to save money on your next flight? Then pick up the phone and call because the best prices are not online. See, SmartFares has special deals with the airlines. When they have unsold seats, they use SmartFares to fill them. So you get airline tickets at ridiculously low prices. With the extra money you'll save, you can book another trip or treat yourself to dinner. Call today and get the best price on your next flight, guaranteed. Also, save up to 50% off business and first class tickets. You're listening to Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If your heart is still hurting over the bodily loss of your loved one, the reason is simple. We're not meant to be separated from those we love, and reconnecting is the only way to end the grief. But reconnecting and staying connected requires guidance. As a gift to her listeners, Dr. Turndorf is offering a limited number of discounted grief relief sessions to help you reestablish a relationship with loved ones in spirit and resolve any unfinished issues. If you're ready to experience the healing and joy of reconnecting, visit drjamieturndorf.com slash grief relief to schedule your session. But don't wait, space is limited. Visit drjamieturndorf.com slash grief relief to find out more. And now, back to Dr. Turndorf. Welcome back to Ask Dr. Love. I'm talking with the wonderful Dr. Christiane Northrup about energy vampires. Before we took the break, you made a really good point about how a lot of therapists are working to save the relationship, even if the relationship is toxic. And I, I remember I had a, a narcissist wife who was verbally assaulting. She was also borderline, but she was verbally assaulting her husband. And he was yeah. bawling his eyes out to the point the mucus was falling on the floor. Most therapists are afraid to use their aggression with patients and basically tell them to hit the road. They can't do this. And, you know, I said to her, you know, I'm not going to allow you to sit here and verbally assault him. You, you might as well just take my book and smash him over the head and beat him with it. You know, this is not permitted. I had a couple that was doing this and I said, where'd you get the idea you're allowed to do this with each other? Like, really? We can't? It's not allowed? People are given permission to misbehave. And that is, I totally don't agree with that. And I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, I had a wonderful physician that I met um, last year and he had been to, they'd been to uh, therapy for four years and every single time he was told you need to be a better man well let me tell you if you are married to a borderline there is no it, no. it will not work and so for you and i to give a person permission to walk away because we're told everything uh, um we're told that you are you can be a doormat, you can be a water, it's for the children, what will people think, all the rest of it. When you 
when you put yourself first and and quite frankly in my in my experience the hay house audience is and, and many many other spiritual people are very willing to do this martyr thing oh wow and, and we need to we need to stop it thank we you for saying that it. thank you for having the courage to say that and i'm going to also give you kudos for something else i read in in your book you know a lot of the spiritual new age audience mm -hmm. is all about oh forgive forgive and i say that is a bunch of bullshit it is you're being abused because what you bury your rage and then you become sick and so i say no you want to understand you can understand the other person you can understand whatever the person's issues or traumas are but that doesn't mean you bury your feelings in a shallow grave and become a doormat and a martyr hell no hell no and that's a real that's right. and in the new age movement it really it is. is and i'll tell you there's another piece that they miss and it's called contrition and repentance and i thought particularly the term repentance had a kind of a religious fundamentalist uh, taint to it and then i learned that is not it repentance means and contrition george pointed out is to be broken into a million pieces and to look in the mirror and admit it's the fourth step of the of the 12th step program admit what you have done wrong and then it's your job to make up for it. And if you have true repentance and true contrition, you will do what it takes to win back the relationships that you have damaged. But what you're going to find with the narcissist. Yeah, it's all empty. move on. No, they move on and and um and we'll they won't shape. because they don't have what it takes to look at themselves. Now, I wanted to also take a little moment to talk about a passage in the book where you talk about the the brain scans and how. Um, the brains, right, of those with narcissists, with narcissistic personality disorder, show that mm -hmm. they are lacking development in the part of the brain that has empathy, right? And That's right. Uh, and you said you thought Freud was wrong that it isn't because they had early developmental problems. So I wanted to take issue with that, and I wanted to just give you something to think about here. So. I believe, you know, we, we know when we look at the MRIs of trauma brain, right? Yeah. We see neuro pathways where the brain is used to firing in certain ways because the brain is being used. It's going down that trauma pathway. I think that what happens with the narcissists is that they're raised by parents who have no empathy, so they don't develop that part of the brain. It's like it's atrophied. It's not being used, you know, and it, it is a result of trauma. Usually narcissists were raised by narcissistic and abusive parents. So their parents didn't show them empathy and they didn't develop it. So they're anemic, you know, in that part of the brain. This is just what I think. If well, they, I think that, that that makes sense. But occasionally um, you'll get a kid that's born to normal parents and they're the okay. kid that is um, torturing pets. Yes, uh, I understand it, that there's it, some it, abnormality it, in the brain. Yeah. So, yes. but either way, I think this is the key. It doesn't really matter what the cause of it is. What matters is the fact that you don't sacrifice your whole life trying right. to help them when the only way they can be helped is from within. Now, for instance, I want to give you an example. So, um, kids with uh, Asperger's, okay. I have a friend who's got an Aspergery son, and but the son has no narcissism, none. Say to his dad, because uh, he misses social cues, and he goes, right. okay, am I supposed to stand up here at this point? Um, how should I do that? And he's, he's literally- sweet. He's sweet. He's sweet. He's asking from the point of view of, I happen to know, I'm looking around, yeah. I miss social cues, and I want to learn how to fit in. Right. An Aspergery person with narcissism 
for it's like oh my god <laughs> that's like run for the hills right and right. and we find that the narcissists they might say they want to change especially when a partner they want to keep is going to leave but they could give two shits about changing it's all bullshit they have no intention to change and if it's it's based on you know what i've seen over decades working with these people to change would mean they'd have to access such horrific pain from their childhood that they, they cannot do that. So they're not going to look at it. You know, it's like how many psychiatrists does it take to change a light bulb? You know how many, right? One, but the light bulbs really got to want to change. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. but it's true. And, and yeah. the, the deal is if they're not going to do the work, um, you know, I mean, I did couple therapy for three oh, years and, and what would happen is he would sit there and he would say nothing or he would begin to have the crocodile tears. And, and what happens, you need to understand these people are, they should get Academy Awards oh, God, for, yes. for the acting because everyone thinks that the empath who's got it together and you know they think that we're the the bad one when in fact it's the other person absolutely. so it's uh, absolutely let's take a break and we'll be back in a moment great are you a business looking to expand across the usa Ask Dr. Love reaches millions of radio listeners, offering you a unique opportunity to reach out to almost every adult listening group as everyone is concerned about their relationships. There is no other relationship advice show broadcast anywhere else in the USA. By advertising on Ask Dr. Love, your company can reach an audience that no other show touches. Visit AskDrLove.com and fill out the contact form to get in on this tremendous opportunity. Fill out the contact form at AskDrLove.com right now and get all the details. Will it be your company that gets to take advantage and grow your business? Want to save money on your next flight? Then pick up the phone and call because the best prices are not online. See, SmartFares has special deals with the airlines. When they have unsold seats, they use SmartFares to fill them. So you get airline tickets at ridiculously low prices. With the extra money you'll save, you can book another trip or treat yourself to dinner. Call today and get the best price on your next flight, guaranteed. Also, save up to 50% off business and first class tickets. You're listening to Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If your heart is still hurting over the bodily loss of your loved one, the reason is simple. We're not meant to be separated from those we love, and reconnecting is the only way to end the grief. But reconnecting and staying connected requires guidance. As a gift to her listeners, Dr. Turndorf is offering a limited number of discounted grief relief sessions to help you reestablish a relationship with loved ones in spirit and resolve any unfinished issues. If you're ready to experience the healing and joy of reconnecting, visit drjamieturndorf.com slash grief relief to schedule your session. But don't wait, space is limited. Visit drjamieturndorf.com slash grief relief to find out more. And now, back to Dr. Turndorf. Welcome back to Ask Dr. Love. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf talking with the wonderful Dr. Christian Northrup. My husband made me say it with the French accent. Pardon. So you're so great. So, you know, one thing I wanted to just take a second to talk about is the a subcategory of narcissists that even therapists don't know about. So women can really be blindsided by these vulnerable narcissists. You know what I'm talking about? They're not grandiose. They don't act larger than light. They don't have all that charisma. And for an empath, that's like, you know, a fly being drawn to honey because, oh, they're so wounded. The poor thing. Wow. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. So what they do. So here's the here's the thing. So let's say that you're um, out at a social gathering and the guy plays on your sympathy, your empathy and says, ever since the divorce, my wife won't let me see the kids. Oh, poor okay. me. A normal woman 
would think, what a loser. I mean, that's not the line you start out with because right. real, real men do not lead with weakness ever, ever. But the path go, oh my God, I can heal him. Okay, so you, so the deal is always to put a high price on your own head. Now, when you do this, you're going to feel incredibly uncomfortable. You're going to feel like a bitch because you're going to have to, you're going to have to go through all that childhood programming that um, you're not allowed to have a need. I want to give you an example. I did a workshop once, and you probably know these things where you remember the um, the emotion and the need that was created by um, the guy who created the language. I'm, I'm forgetting oh, his the name. Love, oh, the love language, the five love languages. No, 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 no. This you... is... Um, Oh, that's so interesting that I can't remember. But anyhow, every what he said, every emotion that you have signifies an unmet need. Uh -huh. So you so you learn that and he he brokered peace all over the planet and and he has an inventory. So if you go to you know emotional inventory, needs inventory, um and he gives you all of the, the emotions. And what we did, we had little cards that had needs on, on, on one little card and emotions on the other. And then you, you were asked to tell a story, a story that triggered you for whatever reason. And then two people were in the group. And as you're telling the story, they would hand over, is this, I'm hearing that this might be a need, a need need for information, a need for validation, um, a need for uh, just someone to listen. And it was the first time in my life, and I'm serious, that I realized, oh my goodness, how to have a need. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, That's like, um, but so many women especially it's part of the female gender role, nurses, doctors, teachers. It's like you're put on this earth to be selfless and take care of other people's needs. That's it's right. Even, it's, it's, it's so built into the culture. It's so it's not surprising to hear you say, well, I'm allowed to have a need. I mean, I'm allowed to not be a doormat. I'm allowed to put myself first, you, you know? That's right. And then if you started with the imprint as a kid, of, I've got this parent who's abusing me and neglecting me and abandoning me, and I'm going to wipe myself out and devote myself to trying to heal this parent, that really sets you up to ignoring your own needs because you're focused on fixing the parent. That's right. So it, it, yeah. it requires, um, you, you have to understand that when you, uh, give you an example. So the first year after my divorce, my the children's father came to the door he was going to take them and i remember thinking oh my god i have ruined their lives oh meaning my kids lives yeah in retrospect i realized i saved their lives because if i hadn't gone through this now this is oh, something yeah. that I know, and your you know your listeners may not get this, but believe me, this has been my whole career. Everything in the body that happens with your health is biosymbolic. I knew that I would get bilateral inflammatory breast cancer and be dead within a year. I knew it. I knew it. I don't doubt it because it was like you're if you were going to be you know poisoning, you know you po the the center of your nurturance is like becoming poison to you you well you what it is is you're giving you're giving you're giving nothing's ever coming back so remember um cancer is the physical metaphor for the extreme need to grow that's um the guy who started memorial sloan kettering said that and so i knew that i was in love with the back walking away like i could give and give and give and i would never get anything back but here's the problem if that's the imprint from childhood, you don't even know. You don't even know it's what totally you're totally unconscious. Yeah. It's yeah, totally, totally unconscious. You know, I had a woman who kept getting breast cancer over and over again. And it was not 
metastatic, and it was always a different form of cancer. And she had a severe issue with an abusive abandon, abandoning mother. And she always talked in this little baby voice and she yeah. lived, lived her life to be a caretaker, caretaking right. everybody. And I said to her, I'm telling you right now that if you don't access your rage, because you are enraged, if you yeah. don't access it, you're gonna die of cancer. I helped her find her rage, rage toward her mother, rage toward her boy. Do you know she never got cancer again? And no, I find not. that with cancer, with, with cancer, a lot of it is the rage is eating you up on the inside. You know, you want to be mm -hmm. cared for, but you're becoming a caretaker, hoping that the other person will follow your lead and give back what you give. And you're just burning up inside with rage over your unmet. That's need. right. Yeah. 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 But you, because again, but if you, if you got the idea, you're not allowed to have needs. So the only way you're going to get any human companionship is to be of service. You know, there's no, it, it, just you being around someone isn't enough. There's something you got to do for them. So you're kind of always. Yes, yes that's right. Like, uh, I don't just I deserve. Mean, it's not like, you know, like the 23rd Psalm when you, I, I, I love to recite that with people who are unentitled because it all talks about God giving to you. He prepared the table before me in the presence of, he anoints my head with, a, it's not about, well, I have to kiss somebody's ass or take somebody's abuse or clean up his crap. No, this is my birthright to be overwhelmingly loved and fed and nurtured. Yes. That's right. And so what happens if, if you're willing to take this journey, if you're willing to take the journey um, and, you know, many people are not because they, it's almost like, okay, my fear of being alone is so yeah. great that I will put up with this. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I'll just put up with this so that I won't be alone. And then you realize more and more and more that you're never as alone um, as you are with somebody who just can't be there for you. Then you're really lonely. Then yes, you're just, yes. and then you and, can find- And you're dying because, you know, you have a lot of excellent discussion in the book about the cytokine storm that occurs, you know, the, the, the inflammation, you know, the whole, you know, the fibromyalgia, the Hashimoto's thyroiditis, the autoimmune diseases, all these things that are on the heels of this selfless sacrifice, diabetes, you know, premature. Yeah. It's so you think, you, you think, well, I'd rather be alone than have all that sickness, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but people don't realize that's the, the choice that they're making. No, because this is what I would find is these women would come in with all of those things you just mentioned and they would do everything i mean they would do a raw vegan diet they would do celery juice they would do everything they only got better once that energy vampire was in their lives and once they had um fulfilled that emptiness inside and then only then now sometimes this is interesting sometimes there is another mate waiting in the wings. And I've seen that. I, I even had a patient who um, was recovering from breast cancer. And uh, we were doing, I was doing a joint workshop with the medical intuitive Carolyn Mace. And Carolyn said to her, you, you can, and she had been, been given a clean bill of health. And Carolyn said to her, you can stay in that marriage if you truly love him you can stay in that marriage but if you don't if you're just staying because you don't want to be abandoned then you're at risk well wouldn't you know one year later that to my office with a second primary a, a completely different tumor in the other breast and go. i asked her what was going on and she had a man who loved her waiting in the wings for her to leave yep. the energy vampire her need to not be abandoned was so huge that she, and she actually realized this, she was, it was more comfortable for her to die of breast cancer yeah. so that she would not be left. She would be the one leaving, but she let the cancer do it for her, you see. But then that's really telling us 
what a profoundly injured person she was because there was no abandonment here. She had someone waiting in the wings to catch her, but it was like she was so undeserving. And I think also, I think too, that there's a, to be to be able to step into I deserve more, you have to be willing to look at how little you had growing up. So you have to walk through the fire, you have to step into the mouth of the lion and you have to go through a period of painful, you know, like a dark night of the soul to realize what you didn't have. And that takes a lot of courage right. to be able to face that and to come out the other side and say, but yes, I do deserve more. And a lot of people find that prospect I mean, just, I don't even want to know that pain. It's so horrible, you know? That, that's right. But then you find out, okay, it's what um, what we call the pain that ends the pain. Yeah, so the pain that ends the pain. Yeah. You know, you finally get down on a mat or whatever, and then you just scream with rage or you bawl your eyes out. And then you find out many times, by the way, you come out the other side laughing. What people think is that if I allow myself to feel how bad it is, yeah, it I was. will be stuck there forever yes i will never yes. the the abyss is is deep there's yes. no bottom place. yes what yes. you find instead okay the body heals through movement sound and tears movement sound and tears and those things are like a grappling hook they go through your body they take out watch that process with uh ann wilson shapes living this workshops where people would just get down on a mat now no one hugging them remember this when okay let's see someone and they're in emotional pain what we want to do oh do you need a hug that's us wanting to stop their process we hug them so we don't have to feel it because it's difficult to watch somebody go through the process but if you trust the process of life and i do because as an OBGYN, i i sat by during labor but, you know, I trust this process. I'm not trying to stop it. You go all the way in and all the way out and you come out a different person. So I but learned there's somebody who catches you when the baby comes out, the baby is caught. So I do like the analogy of we all need to feel caught, held and understood. So I <laughs> think if you, you can do this birthing if you know there's somebody catching you, somebody saying, I'm holding you in that you know, you're a newborn, I'm understanding your pain. Well, what you do with easy. that is you sit with them and hand that them in their pain. Yeah, but you don't stop it. You Hell no. Stop it. You want right. to, they want because you, you want to know I'm holding you, but I'm in that dark pit with you. That's it. And you know, the other thing is just to back up for one second, that feeling of, oh, it'll never stop. When you hear yourself saying that, when you know a patient says it'll never stop, it's a clue that you're in a very young emotional state, like around three. Because when you're three, you say, oh, it's always gonna be this way. It's never gonna end. That's a baby thought. So the fear that it's never gonna stop, if I let myself go back to the painful place, it's always gonna be this way. It's just the young brain confusing you. You know what That's I mean? Right. That's yeah. right, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And so you can practice. One of the things I have in the book, Dodging Energy, practice. So let's say that you have someone at, an, at your office, maybe, or someone in your life who's constantly coming in to get narcissistic supply from you. You just practice being a gray rock. You just patient who said that she felt she did that, but felt guilty. She felt guilty that she wasn't making the person feel better. Oh, you know, they're interrupting. You, I mean, my, so be a gray rock, just, you know, and, and then with a narcissist, let's say that you have separated from the narcissist, but you have someone that you have children with like, or whatever, you just don't give energy. There are ways to do this. Just give them no energy. They, here's the deal. Talk about me good. Talk about me bad. Just talk about me. They're perfectly happy to have your attention, even if it's negative. They want to keep it absolutely stirred up all the right. time. That yeah. is absolutely right. Because, you know, you want to give ice in winter, <laughs> you know, like nothing, absolutely nothing. Because even negative attention is attention. You want to give <laughs> nothing. That's right. And, and That's right. Um, you, you know, when you talk about healing the vampire trauma, 
like you say, well, leaving isn't going to make everything okay. You got to, you know, there's all, you go through in one chapter, all the steps you have to take to heal yourself. But the being the gray rock is sort of like the start to disengage. It's like, I haven't yet fully left, but I'm not going to be sucked in anymore. You know, it's kind of like when you're in a tug of war, you let go of the rope, you just let go and then they fall backwards. You know, there's nobody there. That's right. Yeah. And that's absolutely true. So mm -hmm. do you still do the workshops on this topic? Um, any in a while, but a uh, online course that um, is still available. Uh, if you go to drnorthrop.com, uh, you can find the online course. And um, that was done with uh, Sandra Brown, who wrote Women Who Love Psychopaths. It was done with George Simon. I had all the world's best people taking you step by step through it. But, you know, I found just for women and men reading the book, it's also on Audible um, because I recorded the book. Often the book itself no. is healing. I have no doubt that the book is healing because even uh, just reading it, your voice comes through. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I wanted to mention is a lot of people who have been wounded in childhood and of course become empaths and try to fix their, their abusive, abandoning parents. Right. Lots of times people think, well, and I, this is traditional therapy talking now, if your parents are no longer in a body, you're shit out of luck. It's too late. You're stuck. So this is why I introduced In Love Never Dies, my trans-dimensional grief resolution method, so that people who have been injured can reconnect to hated ones in spirit and heal the unfinished business. And, you know, sometimes you have to wait. Often you have to wait till they're out of a body and they're more able to see how they did you harm in order to be able to heal those painful wounds. And what I find for a lot of empaths who have been with really disturbed narcissistic partners is that when they do this work and they heal the unfinished business, suddenly they're much more entitled. They're so much more healed that they're no longer willing to stay in these dysfunctional relationships. You know, and they need to do that step of healing the unfinished business with a parent or another person. And then I'll tell you what you find is that you, you eventually, you realize that a lot of your relationships were created from the point of attraction of that wounded child. So absolutely, my, my absolutely. entire social life and the people that I'm around now are completely different. Than Absolutely the right. Scenario. Absolutely. The like, wounded child draws you. It's like, you know, when the bells and whistles go off and you're so excited when you first meet because your unconscious says, wait a minute, I'm recognizing a mother or a father who did me harm. And I am excited because hope springs eternal. This time around, I'm going to be such a good empath and caretaker. I'm going to fix you and I'm going to win love. So absolutely, that wounded place, that old scar is what drives us to make these choices. You heal the wound with the parent or whoever that person was who did you harm, and you're free. You stop feeling that compulsion. I don't have to heal the wound anymore. I just did it directly with my parent in spirit. I mm -hmm. love it. And I didn't even believe in God or the afterlife. Would you believe till my husband left his body? I didn't even believe. Wow. Wow. I was a total atheist. My parents were devout atheists. And um, my husband had been for most of his life a famous Jesuit priest. He had taught at the Vatican. Oh, my God. And founded the liberation oh theology movement. And he and I didn't discuss religion, but the minute he left his body, I was, whoa, it's right here. And that's what transformed everything for me. Wow, our relationships shouldn't end. It's never too late to heal. You don't have to be a walking wounded empath who's trying to heal everybody to try to get your goodies through the back door. No, it cha completely changed my life. Yeah, that he had to leave his body for me to get that. But I do, I do love what you said. I, I healed a lot with my father, um, you know, when he'd been dead 30 years. Um, so you're right. You can absolutely do that. And I think this is, what do you call it um, when it's, you know, abnormal grief? There's a term. Oh, they call it the complicated grief syndrome and yeah, whatever. Know, and, and all that. that yeah, it's 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 crap, really, because it doesn't absolutely. need to be that way. And you and I are so on the same page because I say 
The only reason you have protracted grief is because you have unfinished business with that person and you're crying over the fact that, oh, now you're dead and I have no hope of ever getting what I needed from you. So the only way to heal your grief is to reconnect. And anyway, we're not supposed to be disconnected from the people we love and hate. We're supposed to continue our relationships with them. That's so, right. Yeah, I'm so glad that we finally had a chance to be together. It was really yeah. precious being with you. And I just, I just love you. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. You've been wonderful. Yeah. So um, if there's anything you want to share before we close, how people can sign up for your newsletter, get the free gift of your book, would you like to share that now? Yes. If you go to drnorthrup.com, uh, I have a free newsletter. I'm also on, um, uh, you know, I have a substack called True North on Substack. Um, I do things on Twitter, a little bit on Instagram, some on Facebook, but really I think the very best way is uh, the drnorthup.com, our e-news and, um, you know, and, and the Substack is sort of my, you know, these are my inner circle thoughts at the moment. Um, but you know, when the, uh, when the pandemic began, I was with, uh, I had met the love of my life and then he, he left, um, uh, very in April of 2020, he died. And he so I have had a, hmm, yeah, he left his body. Um, he left his body and there were very good reasons for it. And it was like, okay, we're at the beginning of the, you know, the last three years. And in a way he sort of he sort of set the stage for me to do this other thing that I was doing because he was a professor emeritus of public health. And, um, and he had said to me, I think you should go to the state house and testify and, and all that sort of thing. But what happened as a result, it's just like you and your husband, he's very present in life because I healed so much with him and he with me in a short period of time absolutely fantastic i'd love to talk to you more about that because that's very profound and people don't speak about this very often yeah yeah so you know your show will be on your dedicated show page on ask dr love and i gave your uh your executive assistant diane yep. um the link so you can point people to your show indefinitely okay. because it'll be on your page on my website forever beautiful beautiful all right. Thank you so much for, for being with me and for the work you do. And I'll see, talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Sign up for Dr. Jamie's newsletter at askdrlove.com and receive her meditation audio that will guide you to open your heart and chill out during these stressful times.